We're here today at RTI's Energy Technology Development Facility. One of the key cornerstones of this facility is RTI's one ton per day catalytic biomass pyrolysis process. We're scaling this technology up to use high impact biomass feedstocks to convert it into a biocrude intermediate, which can then be upgraded into advanced biofuels to help secure our nation's energy future. All right, so the process starts here. Uh, we take delivery of prepared feedstock. Um, in this case, we have a uh, Lobolly Pine sawdust, a uh, very nice, finely ground material. We load it into the hopper here. Um, fill this up. What this will help us do then is convey biomass material up to the third floor to the top of the uh, feed system. Feedstock from the hopper on the ground floor comes up, gets conveyed through this transfer tube on a long flexible screw connected to the shaft of this motor and it augers it into the top of the feed hopper. So once the top of the feed hopper is filled, it gets transferred down to this first lock hopper where air is purged out of the system with nitrogen. Then it drops down through the second lock hopper, fills up the main feed bin and onto this transfer screw right here. Transfer screw then feeds the sawdust into the mixing zone of our riser reactor section shown here. And this is a convergence of biomass feed and hot regenerated catalyst from our regenerating reactor at the bottom, which is shown here. So once the biomass hits the hot sand, it devolatilizes and gets transferred up into this riser section. At the top of the riser section of the reactor, solids enter, the product vapors and the solids enter this cyclone separator. Product vapors then go out the top of the cyclone, along that pipe, up into the top of the quench system. Solids are captured and dropped down into this first leg of the loop seal. They go down into the standpipe and generate uh, uh, basically a gas seal through a loop seal, which is a separation of the reducing side, the pyrolysis side, and the oxidizing side or the regenerating side of the catalyst. So this is effective uh, air barrier so the oxygen doesn't transfer back to the re reducing side or the pyrolysis side. And then the spent catalyst goes down into the regenerating reactor where it is mixed with air, carbon, and other unconverted biomass is oxidized. It burns, heats up the solids, and then goes back into the mixing zone section that we just saw down below. So the product vapors exit to the top of the cyclone. They go up and are injected into the top of a spray quench, which is mounted on the level above us. It direct, sprays water directly down into a heat exchanger, which quenches the product gases, cools the gases, um, and condenses the product so that we can now take the liquid product, put it into a gas liquid separator here. Liquid accumulates into the bottom of the tank. The vapors exit the top, go out through a thermal oxidizer. The collected liquid then is drained off the bottom of the tank, goes through a filtration system and a water delivery system down into the product storage tanks on the, on the first floor. What I'd like to do now is show you a couple of the products that we can make in our system, obviously on a much smaller scale. These are lab-based materials that we've used to scale up our process. But you can see, without a catalyst, you make a traditional biomass pyrolysis oil looks very much like crude but chemically very different from crude. So what we try and do is use catalysts to then change the chemical and physical properties of this material to produce something that's easier to upgrade, has a lower oxygen content. And then when we take this biocrude material, we can use conventional hydroprocessing technology and upgrade it into a range of gasoline and diesel hydrocarbons uh, which can be used for advanced biofuels.